Hey there designers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll go over how you can create the super cool cursor following trail effect in your Figma prototypes. And you should stick around for a bonus trick where I'll show you how you can do this with a grid or any other shape layer. Let's get started. Once in Figma, create a new page and call it follow cursor. Next, create a frame by pressing F on your keyboard. We can leave it to be 100 by 100 for now. Let's change the name to cursor and add an ellipse inside this frame. You can add an ellipse by pressing O on your keyboard and clicking once. We can change the fill color of this ellipse to a color that we want a trail to be. I'll just add this red color. Now select the ellipse and add a layer blur effect and change the amount to 300. We can now select the frame and turn off clip content. This will help visualize our cursor trail a bit better. Let's change the name of this ellipse to blur and duplicate it. You can do this by holding down Option on Mac and Alt on Windows and dragging the frame across your canvas. Now go back to the first frame that we created and change the fill opacity of this ellipse to 0%. Select both the frames and in the top bar, click on the small arrow next to the component icon and select Create Component Set. This will combine both our frames as one component. Now, Figma will give us a warning saying something is wrong with the naming of your components. That's because both these variants are the same name. Let's fix this. Select your cursor component from the layers panel and then go ahead on the right side, double click on property 1 and change it to state. Now select the first variant that we created and change the state property to inactive. Similarly, select the second variant and change the state property to active. Great. Now let's add some prototyping. Go to the prototype panel on the right. With your first frame selected, create a connection between both variants. This will open a pop-up with prototype settings. Go ahead and change the activation property to while hovering. Change the animation type to smart animate and change the easing to gentle. Great, our cursor is now ready. Let's add it to a frame. Create a new frame by hitting F and selecting MacBook Air in the right panel. We can change the fill color to something dark. Copy the inactive variant of your cursor trail and paste it inside the MacBook frame. Align this to the top left. Duplicate this and drag the duplicate so that there is no space between the two. Now keep hitting Command D or Control D on Windows to add more of your component. Let's select all our cursor trails and add an auto layout by hitting Shift A. Change the frame name to background. And with the background auto layout selected, let's change the layout property to wrap. If we duplicate more of our cursor trails, you will see that most of our trails are going out of view. This is because we did not specify a width to our auto layout for it to wrap the content. We can specify a fixed width by selecting our auto layout and resizing it to give it a fixed width. Just make sure auto layout allows your cursor trails to fill up the entire width of your frame. Next. Keep on duplicating your cursor trails till you fill up the entire frame. That's it. We can now go ahead and play this frame. Before that, in the prototype panel, click on show prototype settings. Here we can change the device to MacBook Air. Now with your frame selected, hit the play button and voila, you have just created the cursor trail effect in your prototype. Now let's create the same effect but with a grid. Duplicate your frame and lock your background auto layout frame. Create a new rectangle by hitting R on your keyboard. Change the width to 2 and the height should be the same as the frame. Duplicate your rectangle and move it across to let's say 50 pixels of the original. And keep hitting Command D to add more duplicates. Now, select all the rectangles and hit Command D again. And with the new rectangle selected, rotate them by 90 degrees. Hold down Shift to get to exactly 90 degrees. Next, hold down Option on Mac and Alt on Windows and resize these rectangles to fill the entire frame. Select all your rectangles and from the top panel select Flatten Selection. This will convert all the rectangles into one vector. Rename this vector to mask. Move it below the background layer, select both of them, right click and select use as mask. That's it. Go ahead and play your prototype and you would have just added a cursor trail but in a grid. 
I'll leave a community file down in the description if you want to play around with what we designed today. There are also some cool examples of websites along with working codes down in the description for you to check out. Thanks a ton for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more design insights. Until next time, happy designing.